Hello, and welcome to episode six of WCF Symphonies Live from the Archive. I'm Artistic Director Jason Weinberger, thrilled to welcome you back into my home for another episode of our series, pulling up past performances and kind of remixing them into a new program. And today we do have a very special new program for you based on a prior performance. Um, earlier in the year, before the pandemic began, uh, the symphony had been planning for a large celebration of Beethoven's music. Of course, 250 years ago, Beethoven was born, and this is a uh, sort of landmark occasion for orchestras around the world. Many orchestras performing Beethoven's music and looking at his legacy as part of this celebration. Um, we decided to take a particular approach to this. We didn't want to perform the giant pieces like the Ninth Symphony. Instead, we wanted to give a more fine-grained look at Beethoven, especially with all the myth-making you uh, generally encounter around his life and around his persona. So we wanted to break it down and look a bit at the history around Beethoven, the world that he came from, and then especially explore the influence he's had since then, and, and particularly his relevance today. And uh, of course, uh, once the pandemic hit, we were faced with a whole bunch of programming challenges, taking what were going to be a whole series of live in-person concerts and turning them into something that is now going to unfold online digitally for all of you to enjoy. This Live from the Archive performance opens up an entire week of Beethoven celebration. And as I mentioned, we're gonna be looking at different aspects of Beethoven other than uh, just his accomplishment as a composer. And we start that process with an incredible collaboration with Waterloo's youth art team. Now, when we originally planned our Beethoven celebration, we had been talking with our partners at youth art team about working on something together. We had really hoped to be able to do something over the summer and present the results at our Beethoven festival this fall. Well, the pandemic wasn't going to stop us. I can tell you it certainly wasn't going to stop, stop the youth art team and these wonderful students. And so with a quick pivot, we slightly changed the nature of our project and we moved everything into a virtual setting. So the youth art team faculty did an incredible job of setting up a virtual camp over the summer. And then myself and artist Gary Kelly and the technical director for the new live, which is my production company, Jacob Mead, the three of us had a chance to meet with the kids and talk with them about different aspects of bringing visuals alongside of music. And of course, we've done this at the symphony quite a bit with artist Gary Kelly, uh, but it's a whole different kettle of fish for kids who have really never even seen anything like that before, let alone done it. And of course, that is one of the things that Youth Art Team is all about, stretching these students' expectations and their abilities and bringing them together to create art in some really inspiring ways. I don't know if those of you watching have had a chance to see their work, but I'll urge you to visit their website a bit later in the program and learn more about the youth art team because they're really doing incredible things here in the Cedar Valley. We're just so proud to work alongside of them. And it was great to work with the kids this summer in virtual camp. After they heard from me and Jacob and Gary, they had a chance to learn a bit more about Beethoven and in particular to listen to Beethoven's music. And for this project, we chose the Emperor Concerto, which is Beethoven's fifth piano concerto. Uh, in fact, a couple of years ago, the symphony played it not once, not twice, but three times on a single concert. It was the finals of the Midwest International Piano Competition, and all three finalists chose the Beethoven Emperor Concerto to play. So we played it with them three times. And as one of those performances featuring our friend Allison Lee, that is uh, the performance that we utilized for this project and the performance you're going to hear in a few minutes. The kids got to know the Emperor Concerto a bit more as well as, as, as some of Beethoven's uh, biographical background. And then we set them loose to create their artwork. And they worked collaboratively, uh, very frequently working on a piece and then passing it off to the next artist to work on. Uh, then we collected all the art and Jacob animated it very much the way he animates Gary Kelly's artwork to accompany the Beethoven Concerto. So the entire process unfolded from July through September here of 2020. And now we're thrilled to share those results with you as a kickoff to our Beethoven celebration. But before we do, I thought it would be wonderful to hear from the students themselves because as much as I might tell you how much they gained from this and what it meant for them, um, I don't think I could do it justice nearly as well as their own words. And so I'd like to share their thoughts about Beethoven with you. We have three artists who are featured in this project, 
And you're going to hear from all three of them next. They are Zimarian Epps, Alexander Futman, and Cedric Matlock. And the three of them worked independently and together, starting from basically a place of no knowledge of Beethoven, as you'll discover, and created something truly remarkable. So let's hear from these three young men about their experience with Beethoven this summer. I didn't know a lot about Beethoven, but I learned more because I learned more of his music and a lot about him because... I didn't know very much. I didn't know that he was deaf or that he... To be honest, I didn't know if he was still alive or dead. I didn't really know much. All I knew was that he was a musician and he made one, a famous piece that I knew of that I've heard of in a, in a movie. I was thinking about how that, like how he was dead. I feel like it was hard for him to have conversations with people or know or know like how how people like thought of him. So I feel like it was kind of hard to be him because because the rich people would ask good musicians to play for them um, and pay them a lot but he was more independent with what he was doing and I think he made the right decision of not doing that and playing for other people. I learned that he was a musician and his backstory and how his childhood was and how it was to be a musician back in when he lived. I feel like my art makes me feel like Beethoven because he has anger sometimes and he has soft and kind of sad type of beats. And I feel like my art makes me feel like Beethoven because you can wanna, wanna draw a circle, but you wanna draw a circle and a dot at the same time. So I feel like you should go with your your opinion that you want to do. Like you would normally when you paint or draw, you do what you want to do. But when you're listening to music, you kind of, you don't really have any control. You just do it. It was fun. It was interesting. It was hard sometimes to like get what it was, what the art would look like to go like in sync with the music. It was kind of hard. So we each had our own surface to draw or paint on and then we would alternate and give it to the next person so that they could do it. And then once we, we kept doing that until we thought that it was finished and it was good. I hope it'll bring them together and um, uh, help them realize what they're doing in their actions get them like a little more peaceful and a little more calm. I hope that everybody knows that you can do you can do it. You can get through everything and that um if you like like uh, like sounds and like like music you can always draw to it if you need to get some anger or sadness out. And I feel like everybody should know that they could do anything they want. They just got to put their mind to it. It's just so incredibly inspiring to hear from these young men about their experience uh, listening to Beethoven, learning about Beethoven, but especially the challenges and the opportunities that they found in creating this visual art. And we hope that uh, by bringing their art together with the music in this program, we can elevate a lot of the things they're talking about and share these things with the wider community. Now, of course, we couldn't do any of this without some really key support. And we want to acknowledge this support because since the pandemic began, uh, the symphony, the youth art team, we really haven't been able to operate um, normally. I mean, we rely on getting together in person to do our work. And so um, in the absence of being able to do that, in the absence of being able to sell tickets for the symphony, um, in the absence of being able to gather large groups of students at youth art team, uh, we've had to revert to some digital means and, um, and that's required some extra support. So we want to acknowledge um, some of the key support that has come in to make this possible. On the symphony side, we want to thank Dave and Dee Vanavenner who are supporting all of our digital work. We're incredibly grateful. And we also want to thank the Waterloo Community Foundation for allowing us to reroute some funds that were supposed to go to a canceled concert and instead apply them to this wonderful project. 
And on behalf of the youth art team, we also want to acknowledge a grant from the Iowa Arts Council that helped make this possible. Another great piece of news is that the youth art team is turning 10 this fall. It's almost impossible to believe, but in the last 10 years, this group has done some amazing things around town. You've seen their murals, you've heard about some of their other projects, and now, of course, you get to experience seeing Beethoven. Um, they are going to be doing a fun drive for this 10th birthday. You can learn more about that at their website, which is youthartteam.com. I want to make sure I get that right. And you can donate there as well as learn more about the 10th birthday bath, bash, excuse me, 10th birthday bash, which is coming up in October. And uh, that'll feature a drive-in movie and some other celebratory things. Um, what a great way to celebrate art in our community by supporting this amazing organization, the Youth Art Team. So I don't want to keep you waiting any longer. I'm sure you want to hear and see the results of this amazing project. Here is Beethoven's Emperor Concerto as performed by WCF Symphony with guest pianist Allison Lee in June of 2016. And this is the performance that was studied by our youth art team members uh, who then animated um, what they heard into artworks uh, that were placed onto the screen as you see them by Jacob Mead from The New Live. We hope you enjoy this wonderful transformative project and that you'll join us for all of our Beethoven 250 activities this coming week. Thank you. 
Thank you.